Word. Well, I'm sorry that you had to deal with that. Yeah, still dealing with it. Um, we are live, and I don't know why my mic keeps lowering, man. Testing. Te okay, that's about right. Uh, so, yeah, what we were just talking about. So, it, there's a, bi a big storm here in New Jersey yesterday, and my basement flooded. And my basement is where that's, my, that's our office. So, I have all expensive electric shit down here. So, I had to sit here with the shop vac and keep vacuuming it so it wouldn't spread. Uh, so, I barely slept last night because I had to, I would go to sleep and set the alarm for an hour. So, because I, I had to come back down and hit it with the shop vac again. Um, to make sure the water didn't spread. It looks like it's finally slowing down now. Um, I guess I have to hire like a mason, someone was saying, after the, like when it, when it dries out to like dig up and, I don't even know why I'm talking about this. Never mind. A Smith mason. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Kamish? Sleepy, sleepy boy? I don't know. I sent him the link. Sleepy McSleeperton? Let me see if he, may, maybe I have a message saying the link. McSleeperton's there? Absolute lack of class not showing up on time seriously he saw the yeah. link wow so wow he, 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 he here he red. is here he is he said left oh, on okay. red oh Proppy, wow commish prop people was accusing you of skipping the show yeah yeah i was a bit insulted <laughs> no I was, I was trying to get the the, the link to open all oh, right good. so we're good to go um there's only six games this won't be a long one or anything hope everyone's doing well <clears throat> basement sealer someone said i'm actually gonna go um, at the back, at, at the end of this, go and read these comments to see if anyone offered uh, some, some advice on how to deal with that. But all right, so first game up. Obviously, we have uh, the Is double any Masons in the comments. <laughs> any Masons out there? <laughs> Anybody? Uh, all right, so we. Got... I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm sorry. No, nah, it's fine. Uh, so we got. <laughs> we'll run a quick uh, poll on. I don't know about. I know me, Toast, and Prop Beaver don't really like bending these double headers. No. Uh, but no. Maybe Especially with these, with this team. <laughs> <laughs> That's to put it lightly. You know what? This is what I'll do. I'll see if anyone. Tigers, first game. Mets, first game. If, if Kate... <clears throat> this is what I'll do for the. I, I, got an, I got an idea. Tigers, second game. Mets second game. That way, is there any bets you like in the double header? Here are your options. How about that? Um, are you asking me? Okay. No, I'll no. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm asking you, oh. but that's also what I put in the poll. Um, yeah. I I would love to play the Tigers here. I mean, obviously, if you're watching this show, I would assume that you know that they're the only team that hasn't lost a game yet. I mean, it's only four games, but uh, three against the or three against the White Sox, one against the Mets. Um, it's the pitching staff that's really doing it too. Uh, they've only given up eight runs in those four games. Two of those games being shutouts, um, and one of those shutouts was in ten innings as well. So, um, I'd really like to come on here and tell you that I want to take the Detroit, and I lean Detroit. Um, I don't think I still don't think that I'm in a position where I can lay juice with the Mets in any way, shape, or form. Uh, that being said, I can't get there because Casey Mize hasn't pitched in over a year and a half or whatever. And as much as he's a first round one of one draft pick, uh, he was first overall that, pick, wasn't he? Yeah. So he's not a guy. I mean, obviously the talent is there. Um, and I mean, in 2021, he wasn't terrible. Um, but again, it's one of those guys where I got to see it before. Um, I can bet on him. And then Adrian Hauser, he actually like ended the year pretty damn good last year. Um, a whole bunch of home starts pitched really good against the Cubs, the Cardinals, the pod, uh, the Padres got to him, I think a little bit, but besides that, he looked pretty damn good. Um, went on the road to Texas, went five innings, only gave up six hits and one run. So I, I would actually, I think that in my heart and in my head, I would say the Mets win this game, but there's just no chance in hell that I'm laying minus 130 to get there. So yeah. Detroit or pass for me. I kind of feel the same way. I'll put the, the Mets up for me, but I'm not betting this. I think the Mets win this game too, but um, Prop Beaver, did you even look at these doubleheaders? Didn't even look. Can't say I blame you. Kamish, anything for the doubleheaders? No, I think if if you are betting the doubleheader, my my approach is always if you get the same team at, at plus money twice, you take them in both games because it's really difficult to to win both games of a doubleheader. I think you see that it, it, like it's on a human level all the way down to the youth level. It's just it's really difficult to win two games against the same team in the same day no matter what the talent 
uh, discrepancy is. I think Casey Mize looked pretty good in spring from what I saw. The Velo looked good. He looked healthy. Uh, I think, I mean, I mean, Adrian Hauser and is it Jose Butto? Is that Buto? Buto? I just want to make sure I was not. I'm not going to pretend that. like I can pronounce these guys. As, but, <laughs> as long as the but, effort's there. But I just, I, I don't know how you're getting minus 140 and, and minus 130 respectively with those two guys, especially considering the Tigers haven't lost yet. I think the Tigers are the better team. I'm with you guys. I think, I think Hauser might be good enough to get the Mets game one, but I, I, I can't see the Tigers losing twice today. Right. So you would say take the Tigers in both games. If you want to bet this, take the Tigers at both games at plus money. Cause if you split, you make a few dollars. Yep. I'm not going to do that. Mostly just cause I don't want to watch the games today. I've been like yeah. in my TV <laughs> nonstop for the last week. So I'm going to take the afternoon to get some stuff done, but that's what I would do if I was watching the games. Got it. Uh, so our poll is, let's see, it, Tigers' first game is the most popular bet. Most people taking the Tigers at plus money in this first one. Uh, Mets' first game is the second most popular bet. So I think most people just clicked on the first game and, and aren't even, haven't even looked at the second game yet. And a lot of times, um, people want to see what happens in the first game before they bet the second one, which, which makes a lot of sense as well. Uh, so let's move on to game three on my list, which is Pittsburgh, Washington. Prop Beaver, did your first five hit for Washington? Uh, yes, it did. And you were too scared to give it out? Uh, I was too scared to give it out, yes. I personally cashed it, but yeah, I really wish I gave that out. Um, yeah. That Oh, you shouldn't live your life scared, Prop Beaver. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. <laughs> Some will say that. <laughs> <laughs> It just felt like too much of a gut call. I feel like I was really reaching a bit, but I don't know. I, I don't know. The numbers did make sense. I just felt like maybe I was using too small of a sample size with the Nats bats, but Mitch Keller might just actually suck. He might he might go back to the suck now, so I don't know. Sometimes the gut calls are the best calls. True. I do like a stinky bet. The stinky bets are the best bets. I don't know if my poll's not working. Oh, there we go. Okay, poll is running. She said. Um, toast? No. Martin Perez Perez That's against Josiah Gray. Isn't, isn't Josiah Gray more reliable on the road, or at least he has been, I believe? Yeah, he's been absolutely terrible. Um, <laughs> I, I can't back Josiah Gray here. I, I was trying to figure I, it, it would be Pirates or Pass. I don't really have very many bets today. Um, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I just I can't really get behind the Pirates right now. I, I really actually think that – I. Yeah, there's just so much in this game. I don't really, doesn't really make sense to me. It's a pass for me. I didn't play it. I, I lean Nats team total over three and a half. And then I was leaning trying to play the Pirates on the money line. Then I realized it's so public and I don't really care about this so much. And I had a really good day yesterday, so I'm not going to waste any money on it. So, yeah, it's going to be end up being a pass for me. Uh, but I lean Pittsburgh, but I'm not that. Got it. Yeah, I mean, Nats are probably a tough sell here. Um, I probably would be leaning Pirates also. Probably well, here's for- the thing. I wanted to play it, but the Nats team totals at like three and a half. It's super juiced. But then like the first five was super juiced last night. And then like at four and a half, it was juiced to what? One. Well, aren't the 30? Nationals and I'm, I'm probably was probably yeah, about to tell lefty. us this. Aren't they terrible against left handed pitching? Probably. No, they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be better against left handed yeah, I thought they were, what, like, terrible the against opposite. lefties yeah. last year. No, it's the opposite. L- last year, they were good against lefties, horrible against righties. But uh, early on in this season, they're killing righties, and they're really not doing well against lefties. So that's what's giving me pause here. That's and why I, I, I don't have a side for this one. What were you going to say, Toast? Nothing. I was just going to say, I was lo- literally looking at two guys in the Washington lineups, and Thomas and Manessis. And those are the, really the two guys that don't I Don't take Manessis, at. bro. Don't take so. Manessis. I was tempted to today, and I no, decided not don't, to. Bro, you, I didn't because I'm those, pretty sure. Those at-bats the other day from Manessis were. That's why. They weren't even competitive. It was pathetic. No, Marco he, Gonzalez was having his way with him. He wasn't coming within He wasn't coming within six inches of the baseball with those swings. Joey yeah, Manessis, so, hits, I was looking last night because I was texting with Beaver. That's what it was. His hits runs yeah. and RBIs was one and a half at minus 165. Like, I just, there's, yeah, it's whatever. I project him to have a good day. I don't care what they project him to do. I would I would say like if I had to pick a game, O'Neill Cruz over one and a half hits runs and RBIs. It's minus one thirty. Usually when those are minus one thirty, that's a guaranteed hit. Oh no, so. O'Neill Cruz over one and a half HR. Yeah, but I haven't bet it yet, so I'm just I'm just looking at now that I'm looking at the DraftKings in my hand. Uh, Prop Beaver, if you're uh, gun to your head to bet this game, 
I'm taking O'Neal Cruz over one oh. and a half bases oh. at plus 115. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, cool. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Josiah Gray... just said it's minus 130. No, I have a different I... That's a different bet. Got it. I have bases at plus oh, 115. Over to I don't your know. total bases. Got it. Yeah, did the line move? Why did, why did Andy put that at plus 100? Well, um, you know Andy in these graphics. What did you think it yeah. was? I'll look it up right now, Beaver. He's not go. It's it's plus oh. 115 everywhere. Where this kid finds these odds, what he does, <laughs> how he makes them up in his head. I mean, truly, it's plus he's 115. Something. I hope Andy's he's watching. It's he's a pistol. On on uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josiah Gray has always been less appealing to back at home in his career. The numbers are awful. And against lefties at home in particular, they're having a field day against them. 416 Woba, three home runs allowed per nine, a 758 FIP. I mean, that's horrendous. And Cruz has been one of the Pirates' best bats against righties uh, the last three seasons. 131 WRC plus, 247 ISO. But where he's really shined is those day games. 172 WRC plus, 330 ISO. Isolate to that to the road, and it gets even better. So really like the spot for Cruz here, and specifically against Gray's pitch mix for... Uh, from right-handed pitching since 2022, Cruz is second amongst active Pirates in ISO, second in Woba, and first in slug percentage. Um, after Gray leaves the game today, he faces a Nats bullpen. They could be shaky, and they only have one lefty available, which is pretty important because Cruz is much better against righties. Uh, I think that there's a reason his home run odds are tied with Sawinski for the shortest in the game. Cruz coming off just one hit in his last two games. Um, on top of that, he pinch hit the other day. So if you're just looking at the regular sheet, he's now gone under this bases line in three straight. I feel like this is the perfect bounce back spot for him after a quiet start to the series. Okay, so O'Neal Cruz over one and a half total bases. And someone said, strange MLB schedule just started the season and a bunch of teams off today. That's pretty common for Thursdays. Um, it, it, Thursdays yeah. is always going to be a really late MLB day because it's it's usually when they break between series. Um, a lot of th you, if these games will all be series just starting or just finishing. Um, usually four game series, not always. Um, but so yeah, Thursday is always going to be. I think Thursday is pretty much always the lightest MLB day of the week. Am I right? I'm pretty sure that's the getaway day. Well, no, yeah. Wednesday is the getaway day. Thursday is just the small slate. It's usually day. one day a week. Like I, it depends. On, it depends on the schedule, like you said, Sauce. If it's a four four game series, three game, but like either Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday, there's usually a pretty light slate. Yeah. Um, and also to Andy's credit, it is minus one hundred five. O'Neill Cruz two plus total bases on Fanduel. It is minus one hundred five on Fanduel. Oh wow! So you were taking unnecessary shots at Andy, probably. What type of pig doesn't go on odds jam and look for the best odds? That wasn't an ad. I know that sounds like a freaking so ad. That but was no. definitely clipped, and they'll be using that. <laughs> what type of pig? All right, Kamish. Um, am I way off here by wanting to bet the Pirates? I'm really considering it. Um, it's minus one thirty on the team in this. Check game. the bullpens; it'll it'll. Because I want to bet something. There's a, it's a light NBA night too. I need some action, man. I got I got three bets open for tonight. I, need I got more. kids to feed. I need boss. <laughs> You're not feeding your kids betting on Martin Perez on a consistent Boy, basis. Beaver. I'll tell you that. But... It's his birthday. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, it's his birthday. How do you even know it's that? Uh, because I follow this account called Narrative Street, and they just basically tweet out any narrative that is you good for props. You should unfollow that account. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play many of their narratives, but I think it's good. Is that the RG me. account? The Rotogriders account? It might be the Rotogriders account. That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, so, Kamish, you're 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 not co-signing a Pirates money line pick here. Uh, I just don't like to bet on bad pitchers, and I, I don't like to bet on bad teams. I don't think Pittsburgh's a bad team, but I think Martin Perez is definitely a bad pitcher. It, it's I, it sucks. I went through the whole slate last night, really trying to find stuff, and I only found one official bet that I had sent out. Uh, I think gun to my head here. I think th I take the better team with Pittsburgh, but there's just we we saw last night with Trevor Williams. Trevor Williams was awful in that game, but. When it's cold out, when, when the wind's blowing like crazy, you know, you, you got some rain mixed in, you can see really bad pitchers end up winning some games. So uh, I tend to not bet these games if possible, and especially, if, you know, if we're, if we're on a pretty good run, I just don't feel the need to force the action. Pittsburgh is definitely the better team overall, but uh, I think it was mentioned Washington last year was very mediocre against left-handed pitching, 15th in OPS, which for a team that won 65 games-ish, uh, to be mediocre at anything is, is pretty notable. So... I think it's worth pointing that out. I would definitely go Pirates full game instead of first five if you're betting this. Uh, well, I, I I think you guys kind of talked me into not betting it. Doesn't sound like a real safe investment here. A um, couple things in the comments. Someone said, Kyle, it's a great NHL night. Well, yo, don't hold out. Drop some, <laughs> drop some picks in the comments then. <laughs>
Well, just tell me it's an NHL night. Hook me up. Um, so I'm also – someone asked where you find bullpen usage. You can find that on plenty of sites. Um, if you go to Fangraphs, there's – it's roster resource. My mic turned down again. If you go to Fangraphs, it's it's roster resource, um, closer depth chart. That's what I use. But um, there's like four or five sites that show you that. So y- y- you can find it. Uh, but yeah, I guess I'll put Pirates up on the screen. But And also, while they were talking, I'm looking at the line movement here. Obviously, you know, they're probably mostly taking Pittsburgh action. Line's dropping. This, mo- this morning at plus at, at 6 a.m., you can get the Nats at plus 112. Uh, looked like you, it was at plus 100 at 11 a.m. consensus. So line, what the hell? I got to figure out how to turn auto volume adjust on this mic off because this I'm going to break something. Um, but, yeah, so uh, it, it seems like the line's moving towards the Nats too. So it's probably going to be a pass for me. Maybe I really, I'm wanted, I really wanted to play Nats team total over three and a half. That's what I really wanted to, but I just couldn't do it. Uh, someone said, okay, so – Oh, wow. All right. So th- a lot of NHL picks. Now, normally I wouldn't stop the show to read these off, but we only have three more games to do. So <laughs> might as well take a minute. Um, uh, Noah says Canes money line. Hairston's on the Canes. Uh, Canes three way. What exactly does that mean? What's three way? Someone specify, oh, yeah. please, once, that bets once hockey. Once it happens to you, you'll know. It's really fun. Bruins money line. Penguins easy. Avalanche money line. <laughs> Tampa Bay money line. Okay. So now I'm getting too many. Uh, Hairston, you like the Canes? Like, Hairston's the name I know. <laughs> so <laughs> you like the you like the Canes, Steve? All right, let's go on to the next game. Cleveland, Minnesota. Um, uh, Kamish, did you by any chance watch the video I uploaded last night on this game? No, I did not. Okay, well then it you know you would know I am on Cleveland here, and he's my mess. What's up? He's a Pablo guy. I guarantee you. Well, does he know? Does he know Pablo's career numbers against one hundred percent? He's on Pablo strikeouts or the Twins' first five in some way, shape, or form. There's no way. Guarantee, hundred percent. There's no way in hell. Go ahead. Wait, you know that? Hold on, hold hold, hold on. I don't know. I don't know for a fact, but I would be shocked. I'm actually equipped with some tools to talk about this game. I did a video on it. Has a Pablo Lopez kink? But go ahead. Okay, so Pablo Lopez. Uh, the current, I know you don't like these numbers, Commission, but the current Cleveland lineup has excellent numbers against Pablo Lopez. A 930 OPS or some shit lifetime against Pablo Lopez. So he struggled with these guys. Not to mention Cleveland opened up the season arguably one of the high, I mean, one of the hottest lineups in baseball against right-handed pitching. Cleveland's a wagon right now. Um, we just saw him completely tag Kirby yesterday. Uh, I don't see any reason to doubt I them. I wouldn't say they tagged him. But okay. Yeah, I was going to watch eight, the game. I don't know if we. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they tagged him though. I. I mean, eight nothing. We can go like what Beaver? Did, well, what did, do you? What do you out of the infield? The score was I mean, eight nothing. Okay, the score fine. was fucking but, eight but, nothing. Did watch? Did you watch it? I don't give a shit how did many watch, little yes things no? did it go his way. It was eight nothing. Yes no? he got shelled. He sucked yesterday. Yes or you, no? Like you don't have to just try and defend every little thing he does. That's ridiculous. Kirby gave up There's three a huge hard difference hit between getting game. shelled and that is getting out of the infield and catcher's interference and shortstop interference. There's a lot of things that went on besides yeah. that. I the, mean, the glazing is out of control, guys. Out of control. <laughs> um, I mean, what are you in? I went back and watched that game like we because it was 8 nothing or whatever while we were still doing the show yesterday, and I, I wasn't watching it, and I was like, ah, you know, it is what it is. We lost. And then I actually went back and rewatched that game and was pissed. For, for the first time because I was like we we, we had a chance in this in the spot I, I mean I if if you want to make the point that it the score is misleading sure but what are you implying that it should have been three nothing like I, no they, eight runs is eight yeah, runs. you say that he got smashed it sounds like they're yeah. hitting home runs and they're getting hard hit well balls I'm not basing well I'm doubles. not I'm not basing not what I said and catchers interference and stuff I'm like not basing that. what I said about Cleveland's lineup solely against on yet solely on yesterday's game no, they've been I'm hitting ready all season the Kirby thing that was it yeah, we're we're just defending our our honor a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you guys need to get his fucking name tattooed on your backs. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how many hard hit balls? I, I, I hold on. So anyway, it's not the Cleveland way, baby. We're gonna hit sure. for contact and we're gonna round the bases on your ass. So what I was saying is the way Cleveland's hitting righties right now and how they've they they've had success against Pablo Lopez in the past. How do you not take them at plus money against a Twins lineup that isn't doing anything? 
I mean, look at the righty starters numbers this year against Cleveland. They have like an 056 ERA. Uh, so I, I, I don't know how you could take Minnesota at that price the way they're hitting. They they have one of the coldest lineups in baseball right now. Super small sample size. But yeah, Guardians, at, at, I got it at plus 130. It's at Pablo plus 136 there, now. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm on the Twins' first five money line. Come yeah. on, dude. Hold you. Stop no, it. I, I, that, that is crazy. You're no, I, I really am. I, it, I think on a smaller slate... Like you, I'm definitely playing this. I think on a bigger slate, I'm, I'm still definitely playing this. I, I know there's a lot of reasons to like Cleveland. Cleveland, similar to last year, they're going to have a platoon advantage pretty much every day they take the field because they don't have a lot of really good regulars in that lineup, so they're able to mix and match uh, to create some good matchups for themselves. But they're coming They're coming over from the West Coast in this spot. The weather's going to be cold. I think Pablo Lopez is by far the better pitcher here. Tanner, Tanner Bobby, Spin, and Vila was both down on opening day. Command was all over the place. He couldn't throw anything in the strike zone. Pablo Lopez, I, I mentioned, I mean, to be fair, I mentioned yesterday, I think, I thought Kirby was a top three pitcher in the American League. Pablo Lopez is also on that list. So if, if you got burned on Kirby yesterday, uh, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that, that Pablo's also on that list. But I like Pablo a lot. He threw more changeups than fastballs against lefties against Kansas City the other day. Should help the platoon splits. And I know last year it looked like he struggled against lefties, but the batted ball profile was pretty similar. He just had crazy differential in uh, batted ball luck between righties and lefties so i don't think that those platoon splits are as bad as they were in 2023 and it's pablo day home opener for the twins pablo day is, as if it's like a national holiday it's pablo day every, every five days it's not bello day i'll tell you that i don't trust bayo anymore either bro but we trust nick pavetta with our lives we learned that yesterday uh, well I, I i it wasn't pavetta's fault that they didn't score at all um so no, I'm saying like, it, like Pavetta is the only reason that was I know competitive. I know he pitched great. Well, actually, I only saw like three innings of that game, so I can't say he pitched great because I didn't watch. But from what I saw, he looked good against Oakland. Uh, toast Cleveland at plus money, right? Uh, yeah, Cleveland money line and uh, your boy Pablo Lopez under five and a half strikeouts at plus money. Uh, Cleveland's his contact team. I have no, I don't, yeah, in 68 plate appearances of the uh, current roster, he's rostering a minuscule 11.8 strikeout rate. I had somebody, somebody sent that to me earlier today for a share. So, yeah, um, I, I really can't add anything uh, to what Kyle said. Um, I, I just think this is an absolute, absolutely red hot lineup that's coming in here that. I understand. I, I will make a case that I don't feel like they really got to George Kirby uh, that bad. But at the, the fact of the matter is they continue to win games. They're scoring four runs or more in every game except for the one game against Oakland on a Sunday. Uh, it's just really hard for me to fade this team. Am I in love with Tanner Bybee? No, not really. But at the same time, uh, he faced Minnesota three times last Dude, year. He was average. Don't all sleep of on don't sleep on Bybee. He's going to be good. And at, and at the end of the year, he actually looked pretty damn decent in his last seven starts of the year. He only gave up three uh, three run, or three runs or more one time, and that was his last start against Oakland. Besides that, it's all set five, six, seven innings, two runs or less. So I don't really have a problem with him. I just There's no way in hell that I trust this Minnesota team right now, not to mention the fact that Cleveland has all their bullpen guys fully rested, all the main guys that you would wanted. And then Minnesota, not only are they coming home from a road trip where they haven't been home yet, um, they used multiple guys yesterday. I know that they're going to be available, but they still had to, they still had to uh, pitch, then travel, and then be at this home opener. So I really hate the spot for the Twins in general. I mean, I think that we're getting a Cleveland team that's playing very, very well at plus money. So, yeah, I'm Cle on Cleveland as well. Um, yeah, so we're all on Cleveland except for Kamish, who's blindly backing Pablo Lopez, of all people. Not blindly. Not blindly. Dude, blindly. There's no way. Because if you look at the Twins lineup numbers, that's crazy. The team can't hit. They they could hit the scrubs they faced. I mean, they didn't face good pitchers. They faced I mean, ass pitchers. They won yesterday because our boy that I've been talking about, Ryan Jeffers, got his first hit of the year. It is a home run. Did, did that, one good inning. One good inning. Did that, inning. Did that guy get a, a today. Did that guy get a stolen base on Jeffers yesterday? No, he, he hit a home run, um, oh. but not a stolen base. Yeah. That was another thing against Kirby. They were running all over him because Cal Rally wasn't back there. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to be able to run as much today, though. The field conditions might not be great. I think that that, that could hurt Cleveland. I, I definitely would not go full game on the Twins because of the bullpen usage. Like you said, they used Jax, uh, Stewart, yeah. O'Kurt, and, and Duarte yesterday. That, that's not ideal for the Twins' full game. 
But Tanner, By dude, Bybee just didn't throw anything in the zone against Oakland. And I'm I'm willing to, to find out, is this going to be an ongoing thing or not? And he's facing Pablo today. So I, I feel like I can roll the dice here. I um, will say, I did notice that he had five walks yesterday or his last time out. And then he had like a, a little bit of a walk issue last year. I'll give you that. People are That's saying the tra the travel for Cleveland. Minnesota had to travel too. They they were in yeah from Milwaukee. And Cleveland though. had a really. I mean, are you I mean, saying because it's an hour long flight that it's like I had to go to my grocery store? And I was going to say Seattle. Miami. I was going to say Seattle to Minnesota is only like three hours. It's yeah, like what well, is that that much of a difference? An hour flight or a three hour flight? I mean, yeah, you're like, changing time been, zones yeah. and it's an afternoon game. I think it is. Maybe and it's Pablo Day. Well, Cleveland's adding three hours too, so uh, because they're going west to east. It seems like I know, probably, I just uh, going across time zones. So. A prop beaver might not have much more to add than what we already said, but I think he's with us. I on... probably has better notes than us. Just to say I'm with you is an understatement. Pablo Day, <laughs> Mablo Day. Uh, yeah, I'm, I have two bets here. I'm going with the Cleveland money line at plus 136, and I'm going with Pablo Lopez to allow over five and a half hits at plus 130. Uh, yeah, numbers against the Guardians lineup, not great. You've already mentioned that. And last year, quite frankly, the dude got lucky. He had a 458 ERA against them, but a 175 whip. Couldn't strike them out whatsoever. Um, and as you were saying, yes, the platoon splits against lefties, you may feel that they're not going to be as potent this year. But if we look at the last two seasons, that's the only data we have to go by. It's been quite bad. His worst spot's been at home against lefties, where he's got a 362 Woba, 292 opposing batting average. That's all Cleveland does. They got seven lefties. All this team does is hit for contact. So if we're just going to hit for contact, I, I think that Lopez could allow six hits here. He already allowed six hits in 47% of his starts last year, 47% of his starts at home as well. So I, I just don't see a way where this red hot Cleveland lineup suddenly cools off. If you guys think George Kirby is a top three pitcher in baseball, he just hit George Kirby and Castillo back to back in their home crib. I, th this is a lineup that is really impressing me right now. Um, and as I was saying yesterday, George Kirby was pretty much unhittable in day starts. The dude got. He wasn't hit guess, yesterday. He was hit yesterday. He was hit quite Barely. a bit. It a little shows bit. In, shows little in the bit. statistics. Um, I, and hard props, balls. Prop Eber, what was your, not great. What was your prop? Twin, Lopez over five and a half hits allowed. Why do I have strikeouts? I, I guess Andy made it wrong. <laughs> Toast played the strikeouts under. Oh, I think, yeah, I, think but the, I didn't even mention that to Andy. I just yeah, I was looking um, at that this morning. <laughs> and this, I think the strikeouts make sense. Like I don't expect Pablo to have ten Ks today. The Guardians are one of the most high high contact lineups in in all of baseball. Five and a half at plus money. Am I crazy? Yeah, I, uh, I think that's kind of insane. Especially the Guardians again. Like they're gonna they might have eight lefties in the lineup, and Pablo definitely has. Uh, less strikeout worthy stuff against lefties and righties. I think the under strikeouts makes sense. Yeah, they're fourth fourth lowest rate in the league right now. Yeah, and that's going to uh, continue. So yeah, the four starting righties face them: Ross, Juna, Singer, and Lugo combined for a zero point nine two WHIP and zero four three ERA. Joe Ross yesterday, you were talking about the walks problems with Bybee. The guy walked five guys yesterday. How many runs did he give up? Zero. This Twins lineup <laughs> is dead. Point, this Beaver. Twins he's, he's lineup he's, he's is Beaver. dead. The seat. They're They're Beaver. Beaver. You're pushing up excellent value here, Commission. I'm really sad for you. Prop Beaver just delivered a knockout punch. That was a good one, Beaver. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so... Make sure we clip this one today. 64%, 24% on Cleveland. So even though the pie charts in the bottom left indicate the actions coming in on Minnesota, I don't know how seriously I take those because I feel like everyone's on Cleveland here. No, Beaver called this last night. Uh, I got to give Beaver credit. He said everybody, the people on the Action Network all over the Twins, everybody's betting the Twins, and the line continues to go up. And he So crazy it. to me. Yeah, I Beaver just, hit this I one truly, on the it, I, it, I can't, it doesn't process to me. I don't get it. If the Beaver, Action Network guys are on Beaver it. Beaver got me an extra five cents because if I If the waited. Action Network guys are on it, the Twins are a lock. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Oh, that's facts. No, that makes me nervous. I'm actually going to check that. It's a plus EV oh, model. You don't have to check, Commission. It's one of the first things I do every day. Guaranteed it. It's already here. Is everybody on the Twins? That Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw Look about four that. or five people on that. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they got some. First they, five they got some. They got some, good, up, they got some dogs. They got some dogs at the network. Yeah, There's no lie about that. I, they got some good guys over there. I don't know what was the, the shade at them for no reason. No, a few. They, 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 I mean, I I, like, I'm affiliated with Action Network. But there's. There's just a few guys in there that I feel like are just kind of. You could probably say it. that about everywhere. But yeah. we got Marlins Cardinals next. And what I wanted to do here, I obviously, I'm not taking the Marlins. Uh, 
I, we, <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. <laughs> um, I would. I, I, there's no. I've been. If you've been watching, we've pretty much been just blindly putting whatever graphic is against the Marlins the last <laughs> few days. Um, that being said, is I don't love the price with Lance Lynn on the mound. What do you guys think about? This is what I was considering. What do you guys think about maybe a Cardinals team total over? I was considering it. Ryan Weathers is just truly pissed. I know the Cardinals have been good against lefties thus far, and the bottom half of their lineup is so, so bad with the injuries right now. But Ryan Weathers is a different breed of bad. I mean, you could put, like, I don't even know. You could put, like, the JV, the local JV team up against him, and he's going to give up three runs. So I don't. I feel like that's not a bad bet. That's what I, that's what I want to get to, depending on what you guys say. Uh, Kamish, I'm assuming – well, actually – I don't know if I've ever heard Kamish talk about Lance Lynn. What are your thoughts on Lance? Oh, Lance is a fade, bro. Uh, really? I, I liked what I saw that first start. There was some good I fight mean, there. I did not. I, I, no, thought, I thought he looked like total shit. This is a fact. This season, no righty has pitched a better game against the Dodgers than Lance Lynn has. Okay, Back but up. define he better. Got really, really he got really, really lucky to get that. Yeah. Like, I mean, One, Logan I don't know. Just first, two guys on the twice and, you get and then out he of struck it. out the side to get out of it. Yeah, I think yeah. if you're striking out the side, that's not luck. That's called skill. If you strike right out there. the side with the bases loaded, that's called pitch. Like, how is that that's luck? That's called clutch. Yeah, that's, that's called, called being clutch a pitching. Uh, I, I just that's I what guess I'm looking for in a guy. Agree to disagree. I mean, I'm not bet. I don't want to bet the Cardinals at this price with Lance Lynn. So I'm not saying I, I sit here and implicitly trust Lance Lynn. But all the righties that are pitching against the Dodgers this year, there's Logan Webb. There's some good names in there. And the one that gave the Dodgers the most problems was Lance Lynn. I, I don't Seriously. think the Do- I don't I don't think Lynn's going to give many people problems. I'll just put it that. <laughs> I mean, that's probably fair. <laughs> um, and he did pitch a game in Miami last year, and the Marlins tattooed him. But that was a completely different Marlins lineup, and. That was also in Miami. This one's at home at Bush Stadium, where, I mean, obviously hasn't been his lo- home for long at all. Uh, in fact, has he ever made a home start here? This is Well, he thing. used to be a Cardinal back in the day. Yeah, oh, for quite a while. A he was actually yeah. probably pretty comfortable at the stadium. Um, but regardless, he has, uh, on his career, he has solid home away splits. Lance Lynn's significantly better at home. The only thing, the, it's Lance Lynn, number one. But number two, <laughs> the Marlins are going to load the lineup up with lefties. I think they're going to have five lefties in the lineup. And Lance Lynn has struggled. Uh, saying Lance Lynn struggles against left-handed bats might be a little bit of an undersell. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he has some problems getting lefties out. And, and we're going to probably have uh, four. This mic, man. Four lefties in the lineup for, I mean, five lefties in the lineup for Miami. So if you want to trust Lance Lynn at minus 155, I mean, the the Marlins but what about I th- I'm thinking Cardinals team total over or I could be talked into just playing the, the the total at eight and a half I think that's the best move commission total over eight and a half I, I truly do um I don't I don't know if I'm gonna even bet this game uh but I cannot I trust me I, I've been fading the Marlins every single day like but at the same time the caveat that I said was if they're gonna give me these Marlins team against this Marlins team at a decent price this is not a decent price um Again, I don't think that the Marlins are going to win this game, but Ryan and Ryan Weathers doesn't even go deep into the games that he pitches. I mean, look at his last seven starts going back to 2020. Or yeah, going back to last year, four innings, six, three, three to third, four and two thirds, one and two thirds, three, one and two thirds. So, I mean, you're going to get a whole bunch of, most likely you're going to get a whole bunch of shots at this Marlins bullpen. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, that Marlins bullpen. I, I don't really have a problem with, Lance Lynn, I, I mean, I don't think he's going to get absolutely shelled or anything. It's just really hard for me to worry about this Marlins lineup the way that they've been. And the lefties in that lineup are, arise is really good. And I hope he's a Padre here in the next month or so. But he hasn't started the uh, year well. Jazz Chisholm's a lefty that's really strikeout prone that I'd probably take my chances with Lance Lynn against him. Jesus Sanchez is good one day, bad six days. And then Nick Gordon has hits a home run once a month, and that's about it. So the lefties in that Marlins lineup don't really scare me a little, really at all either so I, I i yeah it's this one's kind of this one was hard for me but ballpark pal had this at like nine and a half so i would lean i would lean if i had to make a play in this game i'd lean cardinals and i lean over uh there's a lot of people in the comments again betting the marlins i i, <laughs> I that's crazy man. <laughs> this is my, the marlins the marlins this year might be the worst baseball team that we've seen in the last decade 
Like they might not win 50 games. They're Dude, people have been betting the Marlins the last like three days. Like remember the pie tra- charts the last like three days. Like what are we yeah. doing, guys? I, I think At there's a, today, it's not the pie charts on them. I it's think there's a the realistic right. chance that the Marlins win less than 50 games and have win a record in the 40s. 50 games, Kyle. Do you know how hard that is to do? 50 games. I, what oh, what I have to be have the most under pitiful 59. piece of shit, to, like disgraceful well, franchise. Has there been to a worse team? 50 games. Has there been a worse team that we've seen in the last decade? Yes, the Rockies. I'm sure, dude. I'm sure, dude. Come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't the know. Rockies I mean, are worse. That's on the top, but We're the Rockies really early right on. Now are really We're really bad. early on. We're really early on. Uh, I mean, so- Cal Quattro yesterday got shelled in conditions that literally leaned into a good game for him. He's that bad. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the better pitchers. <laughs> that was terrible. That I love when Beaver gets going when he gets when he gets animated about stuff, man. It's... I'll put the over I'm, up I'm, for me because that's why it's morning. Terrible yesterday. I'm with you, bro. I, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. All right, Prop Beaver, you taking the Cardinals then? Uh, wow. I, I if gotta you're about say, to say I... no after that rant. Then what rant? You just went on an the... anti Marlins rant, and then you're scared to fade them. Okay, well, I, I don't need to do it at this price. It's a bit much. It is still Lance Lynn on the mound. I do like. Okay, I do like what I saw from him in terms of the fight. Obviously, the hits allowed early. Not great. Not not very promising. But I do like the fight. The fact that he was able to strike out the side in that pressure situation with those Dodgers bats and the bases loaded that shows a lot to me. But obviously, we've seen the numbers the last year or two. It's pretty brutal to just go ahead and trust this guy in a small slate. When there's plenty of opportunities tomorrow with value all ahead of us, just doesn't make sense to really force something here. So I'm going to pass. I would lean over though. You would lean over also. All right, maybe just I'll because Ryan, just because Ryan Weathers could give up 12 runs himself. Kamis, would you co-sign an over? Let me check this Marlins bullpen really quick. No, I would. I would not co-sign an over. Also, I just we, we keep saying Lance Lynch struck out the side with the bases loaded, and yet like he gets a little bit of credit for that. But he got Will Smith on a ball that was definitely out of the zone. That's cool. Uh, is that a, I thought getting uh, generating swings and misses is a skill set by a pitcher. No, no, but it wasn't a swing and a miss. So he, it, like that's just a good call. frame job. He got a that's generous just a good call. frame job. He got a generous so, call. I, I I misunderstood what you said. Oh, actually, no, you're right. No, actually, it was a swing and strike. Okay, so he gets a point for getting Will Smith. Then he gets Max Muncy, which I feel like one of us could get Max Muncy at least once in, in an outing. <laughs> and then Teoscar Hernandez, which Lynn is halfway decent against righties, and Teoscar Hernandez. Uh, is, I mean, he'll swing at pretty much anything uh, anywhere near the strike zone. So, like, just pump the brakes a little bit with Lance. I mean, is, we're talking is, about the Marlins. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. That is fair. That is, fair. and that's why I can't co-sign an over is because I think this Marlins offense is absolutely pathetic. And when you guys like you guys mentioned the splits with Lynn against lefties, and I it, that's 100 percent a thing. I only typically think it's a concern if a team has six plus in in one platoon. So. If the Marlins had six plus lefties here, I'd be a little bit nervous for Lynn. But five, like I, he still got four right-handed bats in there, and none of these lefties, other than it'll be a, a rise in Bell at the top of the order. But then he's not going to have any two lefties back to back, so he's going to have opportunities to get out of jams here, similar to similar to that game against the Dodgers. You get uh, Muncie and the Tioscar, two swing and miss prone guys. Toast already mentioned with, with Jazz Chisholm swings and misses a lot. Same with those other guys. So. I don't think this is the worst matchup in the world for Lance Lynn. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a decent game. Ryan Weathers has been one of those like really bad pitchers in recent years as well. And I was doing my, my, my pitcher notes after he pitched his first game of the season. Fastball velo up almost two miles an hour. Sweeper velo up a lot, which is an emerging theme in Major League Baseball. These guys are throwing their breaking stuff with more velo. Trades a little bit of uh, movement on the pitch, but it, it just makes it a lot more difficult to differentiate it between the fastball. And we saw he got three swings and misses on three swings with that sweeper. So Ryan Weathers might not be as bad as he's been in, in recent seasons. He, he pounded the zone pretty well. Guys did make a lot of contact against him. So I'm kind of a wait and see guy with Ryan Weathers. So I like I can't co-sign an over. I, I think I would probably lean under personally. But this is another situation where we have two bad pitchers, two bad teams. Uh, I'm just not going to force it. I, it's tempting to force it because we only have a few games on the slate. But I think this is a game that none of us are probably considering if they're, if it's a 15 gamer. I want to bring Ryan Weathers. Uh, Ryan Weathers has been doing this for years now, though, where he looks really good at times, and there's a lot of things you can get behind. And then every time you start to look, trust this kid a little bit, he just shits the bed. Trust me. Like he came Thanos. from San Diego. He came from San Diego. 
I yeah, want to bring. And this, I think that's uh, fair, and that's like I'm, not, and that's why I'm not trusting him. Like I, I'm not, I'm not on board with Ryan Weathers. It's just more of a, a wait and see thing with him. I want to bring this comment up here. <laughs> TWD. Sure he family. says minus one fifty five Lynn. Okay, <laughs> just to give you an idea, um, Patrick Sandoval just cashed at minus one forty. Tyler Anderson just cashed at minus one thirty five against the Marlins. Before that, it was Silseth who cashed as a favorite against the Marlins. So if you're like, oh, Aren't Lance. They... No, 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 no. That can't be right. Weren't they all that dogs was... in those games? No, yeah, those they weren't. Were... The Angels were not dogs in the one in the sand of all I'm games. They were definitely favored against Tyler Anderson, though, because they had Lizardo. Yeah, Tyler Anderson, there was plus okay. 125. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, the point is bad starting pitchers have been beating the Marlins every single. It's not like they're seeing aces, and now they finally get Lance Lynn. <laughs> They've seen all bad pitchers. <laughs> you could have laddered strikeouts for, for Patrick <laughs> yeah. Sandoval, who routinely gets three strikeouts or less that's that's insane yeah all right next up white Sox royals got a heater i'd love you know me some royals ball but minus 180 dude, cool. dude am i fucking crazy like that i want to bet the white Sox here like is any, can you're crazy any? no no, no, I think Poppy wants to bet. He Poppy wants to bet the White Sox too. I don't think he did, but he was talking about no, it last I night. I that's no. What I was implying is that listen, the Royals, they're a team on the rise. I'm high about them this year. Minus one eighty. Okay. I'm not even close to there with them yet. I'm not we're even together. close to there with them yet. I'm with you, yeah, Beaver. Okay. If we're getting them at like minus one forty in this spot, okay, I could like do that. That, that that's like doable. Minus one eighty. Jesus, that that's way too much. I went with uh. Michael Sorica under three and a half K's here. I got that at minus 111 on FanDuel. Um, early in his career with Atlanta, very promising, great stuff, but he's never really been a K guy. And if we look at his last three seasons, this is a guy with just wait, a wait, 16. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say very promising? Wasn't he terrible last year? In the beginning of his career with the Braves, got when it. he was one of their best arms, got it, he got was it. very got promising. It. Yes, last year he was terrible. If we look at his last three seasons, this is a guy with a 16.4K percentage, just a 6.6K minus BB percentage, and a 1.49 whip. Uh, filter that to the road. That's just a 13.7K percentage and 4.3K minus BB percentage in his road starts. It's just hard to rack up Ks when you're not pitching efficiently. Uh, now faces a Royals lineup that when I was doing my cap sheet uh, in the offseason, they projected to be a lot better in terms of K percentage this season, especially against righties. And the early results have been really promising. Uh, overall, they're only 18th in K percentage. Last year, they were near the bottom five. Uh, and through the first five, more notably, they're seventh in K percentage at just 17.5%. We just saw this group hold Burns, Ober, and Ryan, who combined nine Ks through 12.1 innings of work. And Sorica's K stuff doesn't even sniff theirs. This man, Sorica, just had zero Ks and three whiffs against the Tigers, a lineup that I am looking to steadily target this year with K overs. They're littered with K targets. That really says a lot to me. Um, there's a guy on Twitter, John Stetson, really good uh, MLB capper. I think he's criminally underrated uh in his write-up he said that the royals currently boast the fifth highest contact percentage on pitches in the strike zone uh where they've had issues this season is chasing pitches out of the zone but sorica isn't really a chase guy if you look at his chase percentage last season it was 23.9 percent that would have qualified as 10th percentile so at home in a night game where we tend to see batters strike out a bit less i'm gonna take my chances here that sorica continues to start slow and the royals continue to make contact at a high rate uh, oh, someone said, me. Someone said like in the good. comments, uh, White Sox plus one at minus 103 on Bet Rivers. Uh, the reason I read that off is these AL Central games tend to be pretty low scoring. Now, maybe the White Sox don't fall into the same category, but they are in that division. And like Cleveland, Detroit, Kansas City, uh, we were making a joke in the Discord, but, like we should just blindly bet over unders in these di AL Central divisional games, and I bet you we'll hit it over sixty percent on the season. That being said, the White Sox don't really fall in because they get shelled a lot. Toast. Um, it would be White Sox or pass for me, to be dead honest. Uh, the price is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm not going to bet this because I can't trust Sororka. Um, at all, but I really am not worried about this Royals lineup against right-handed pitching, not to mention the fact that they're coming home from Baltimore where they won a game and then they probably they probably should have won two or three games. Um, their closer, Will Smith, let them one get away. So I think they're actually f flying pretty high. Don't like teams coming home from a road trip. Uh, so I, I feel like it's a kind of like a flat spot for the Royals. Um, again, just really, really hard to get behind Soroka and the 
in the White Sox with that lineup. So again, it's a it's a very very small lean, uh, but there's just no way in hell I can lay that juice with the Royals coming home from a road trip. Uh, it's not going to happen. But I will say, I just really want to say though that Seth Lugo is a, a criminally underrated right now. Um, he's probably at least one of the better upper half pitchers in this league uh, that nobody really talks about. So um, he was really really good all year last year. He had a fantastic. He was a, he was a dope game. Met. Yeah, I, I no, don't no, for those. real. He was he was awesome <laughs> no, with the Mets. He was, yeah, good, but last year was different. Last year was really special. That was a really good year. First year as a starter, too. Full season. That was yeah, that was excellent. So I, I just wanted to say that Seth Lugo. It's not like a faded Lugo or anything like that. And his first start this year, he went six innings against the Twins. It would obviously they they're terrible. They only had two hits, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things where I, it's just a, a huge price thing for me. So I just there's no way I can do that with the Royals. If uh, what do you guys think about? It, do you guys trust the um do you guys trust uh the Royals bats against righties? No. Uh, against Soroka, yes. <laughs> Just because the amount of contact he gives up, yeah, I think they could at least get So then what what about him. a Royals first five run line knock that price down a little bit? Because it's still like 130 or something Is like that. Is it oh, really? Yeah, oh my Jesus God. Christ. Christ on the grass. I've been looking for 30 minutes trying to find a bet for this game. Like I tried looking first three with Kamish on the ma- or Kamish here with us. I just couldn't get there. Like, yeah, it's just kind of gross. Um, yeah, you're just kind of really priced out of anything. And then the Royals versus right-handed pitching. If I bring up Beaver's cheat sheet, there's one guy in green, and that's Vinny Pasquantino, and he was hurt all last year. So I don't even know how much I trust him so much. So, I mean, Bobby Witt Jr., barely above league average. I mean, yeah, it's just uh, it's kind of bleak against for, for the Royals versus right-handed pitching. Someone's saying uh, that you can get Royals' first five run line at minus 118 on FanDuel. It's not too bad. Definitely yeah. juice like for a first five run line. Much. That's definitely juice to hell still, but yeah, that's still expensive. Commission, uh, what do you think about this game? I uh, pretty similar to what these guys have said. I, I really like the Royals in the first five, but the the, the price is w- way juicier than I had expected. Michael Soroka is a guy that I think you can fade consistently and probably make a a, a really significant amount of money on. Just I mean, yeah. and no disrespect to him, he's torn his Achilles twice. There's not many guys who are even on a big league mound after tearing their Achilles twice. So I think he gets all the respect and credit in the world for still fighting and, and being out there. But he just doesn't have good stuff. He's extremely, extremely hittable. The Royals, though, you guys just mentioned the the issues against right-handed pitching. They're going to make contact today, but they're just not going to make great quality of contact. I also like Melendez in, in addition to, to Pascantino. That still only gives you two really good bats here, Bobby Witt. Michael Garcia are just good hitters overall, but it's not the most potent lineup against right-handed pitching. I really thought we might get a chance to to take the Royals here, just like a first five money line at minus 130, minus 140 situation. So it's a little bit priced out for me as well. I think if you're looking at this game, um, Stetson, I, I was actually talking to him last night about the, the Royals contact stuff. They they chase a lot of pitches out of the zone, but they they also make contact on a lot of pitches out of the zone. Coming into the week, they had the third highest contact rate on pitches outside the strike zone. The reason that's important, it's actually the most important thing when you're capping K props, is because if you can consistently foul those pitches off that are outside the zone, it's really tough to strike you out, especially with a guy like Soroka who's not going to blow anything by you in the zone. So I think under 3.5 Ks, that's that's a playable line as last time I looked, uh, and I know Stetson's on that. So that makes sense to me. Uh, if you want more juice, Soroka under 2.5 walks makes sense to me. I think he's going to be in the zone a lot, especially with the colder weather. And I like the Royals. I just, I don't know. I'm, I I don't want to play. I mean, if Pablo lets me down at four o'clock, maybe I play the Royals and and you know just live with it. But I'm, I don't think I can. I, I can't rationalize minus one sixty. I like Seth Lugo at home, but minus one sixty. I, I don't know if I'm there. Yeah, there's uh, there's no chance in hell. I bet Kansas City at this price. But I, I the price is also making me t- terrified to bet the White Sox. Also. Um, Damn, yeah. man, we really got nothing here. I, I feel like this, this slate sucks. <laughs> it's really yeah, bad. Yeah, it's a tough slate. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's important for people to realize, too. Like, this is this is a day where we have we maybe maybe two good pitchers on the mound with, with Pablo and Seth Lugo, three if you throw in Tanner Bobby, but really only two games that have good pitchers, no matter how you cut it. Don't lose a bunch of money today. We've had a, a really good week. There's another really good slate tomorrow. We're starting to get to the back of the top of these rotations with guys with 
guys like Freddie Peralta, Bobby Miller, Scoobles back on the mound, uh, Hunter Brown, Cutter Crawford. Like, there's better pitchers coming this weekend. Don't lose out your ass today and then be scared to fire on good pitching Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. Uh, I put White Sox plus one and a half up, but I'm not betting that. You're crazy. Oh, Cutter, Cutter Crawford's on the road tomorrow. God bless America. What is he good? God is good. God is against good. the Angels, man. Yeah. The and Red the Red Angels Red. against righties, I'm not nearly as high on as against lefties. Dude, I'll take Boston against anybody you mean, right now. Wait, you can... wait, wait, wait. You mean the Angels, the most, uh, the fifth most profitable team in baseball? Yeah, but then they just play the Marlins. I was going to say, games? when you play the Marlins, it's pretty easy to be profitable. Yeah, let, let's Baltimore. see how they do against real teams. Did you guys see that Oakland's going to play in Sacramento for two years? No? Did, are the, are the, the Mets winning? What? what? Oh, no, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> For some reason, uh, right. we got guys on base. Uh, so, but there's yeah. only there's only four games to do a community parlay with. So, what do we do here? Uh, I guess we'll just. Uh, so we'll. This is what we'll do. Just just pick winners and. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. Pick winners. Well, and we'll just yeah. do the parlay. We'll part all four of the games, not not counting the dead uh, the double header. That'll be the community parlay. So. I put up Pirates and Nationals, Guardians and Twins. Obviously, these teams play each other, so hopefully we get we'll, we'll pick the whatever team wins from each game. And I would imagine fun. it's going to be Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Yeah, and, and I was just going to say too, if you want action on these different games, like if you're in front of a TV or you just want to watch baseball, whatever the case is today, on days like this, I'm I'm actually more of a fan of a parlay or a round robin instead of having five units out if you take a half a unit and you throw it on a, a round robin or a parlay for me that satisfies the itch to have some action uh, across the board but it doesn't overexpose me as well round robin yeah and i haven't had i haven't played a round robin in a while yeah. Beaver, i like i like the devil rays hat man yeah i try i'm trying to get a bit more into uh retro hats culture kings has been hooking me up so yeah, it's nice. It's clean. Did you just well, drop a ad. plug? Did you just drop a plug? Ad. That's the second ad of the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I got ad on ads on ads. on my show? Yeah, Get 75% yeah. off Code Beaver, right? Yeah, Code Beaver. Um, <laughs> if, you use the code, if you use the code Poo Darvish, you get um, buy one, get one free. <laughs> Poo Darvish. <laughs> Are they fitted? Uh, no, you can get snapbacks, you get strapbacks, you get whatever you want on there. It's, it's dope. It's a good time. All right, bro, if you're dropping a referral code, you're cutting me in on it. I don't have a referral code. I wish I did. <laughs> Dude, if he had a referral code, <laughs> Darvish, you don't understand how epic that would be. Yeah, I think we go triple platinum. Like yeah, You guys would both be rich. <laughs> Poo Darvish. Hold <laughs> I said, how can the Pirates and Guardians money line be in a parlay if they play one another? Simple. They don't play one another. They, yeah, they don't play each other. Did I? It's the Guardians twins and then the Pirates nationals. Promo code awfully hot coffee pot. That's an awfully hot time. coffee pot. We, I need to look up that Eminem song just to hear it now. Once. It's not a, it's not a song. It's a freestyle. It's a, it's okay. the worst thing I've ever heard. Someone said, oh. someone said you guys should get into referrals. I mean, obviously, I have a lot of emails with that, but I don't like my content to come off like a billboard. I feel like, nah, it's, we're I feel just, like, it's, I feel like it's a bad look. We're here to hang out and talk back to you guys. Yeah. not here to sell. I, also, sell. I don't even like I don't even like dropping my own website, let alone trying to sell someone else's shit. Like, I, it's just not my idea. Yeah. And I, I think, too, like, you know, like, so, like uh, Toast mentions Ballpark Pal and things like that. Like, if I ever like a service, I'll just tell you guys I like it. Like, I, I don't feel like... Yeah. I yeah. need to be cut in on any profit. If you guys would benefit from something, I'm just well, and also sharing. like the, like the ballpark odds, pal please, guy. odds, please, plus nine fifty eight. No, plus nine eighty five actually. Like he, you could tell he was like upset that he had to do the ten dollars a month thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, like he's such a good guy. <laughs> um, so the <clears throat> community parlay is Pirates, Guardians, Cardinals, Royals. Plus nine eighty five. There you go. I might just tell the community parlay then. I was gonna I, say I, it, I do, I today's one of those days. It would probably hit too, and it actually <laughs> looks solid. <laughs> yeah, I mean those are are the teams that I would pick to win every game. That's a you start. Know what? Fuck it, whatever. It's fifty bucks. 
Uh, so, yeah, everyone have a good day. I'll be back at 4 p.m. for NBA. Me and you, Capper, I think. I don't even think we have a third. So it'll probably just be the two of us. It's not a crazy night for, for as far as betting action. It's, it's not really a loaded night. So, everyone, have a good day. Remember to bet responsibly. Hopefully, met sweet today. <laughs> Most likely not. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. See you guys. See ya.